The Hubble Space Telescope, after over a decade of development, was finally launched on Tuesday, April 24, 1990, with the Space Shuttle crew of STS-31. The next several days would include a lot of long, stressful hours for the Hubble operations team and NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. Problems kept popping up, with the pressure of the entire world watching. But, even under pressure, engineers are capable of some pretty creative problem solving. The week that Hubble deployed was a very intense week for all of us here. Uh, NASA had beat the drums pretty loudly for HST, so everybody was watching. Everybody was paying attention. Yeah, on a Friday morning at about 4.30, um, we noticed that we were getting what we call safe mode counts. There were uh, high torques developing in the high gain antenna that we, we didn't expect. The, uh, the high gain antennas are uh, the, our main way to communicate with the ground, to get our science data there. And we have two high gain antennas, one on each side. The spacecraft had noticed that when it tried to move one of the antennas, there was resistance and it, the spacecraft was programmed such that if it felt continued resistance, it would just declare sort of, uh, I'm not gonna go any further with this. On Saturday, we had gotten a Tiger team together and looked at the, uh, the high torques we'd seen on the high gain antenna on Friday. About two o'clock, we turned it back on again, tried to move it again, and immediately we saw we were still getting high torques on there. When I walked into the building on Sunday, after uh, having gotten a little bit of sleep, operations of the Hubble had basically stopped. The managers put all of the technical people in a room and said, figure this out. Today, you would bring it up on a screen and you would move the, the thing around and you would see what's going on. But these were much more primitive days. So I was in, with my hands trying to figure out what the various positions of the, of the high gain antenna motors were. We were able to find some uh, loose leaf binder sort of things with a lot of photos of the high gain antenna. I saw this cable loop and it appeared to me to be at an odd position. Somewhere along the line, I just, I, I said probably half jokingly, boy, if I had a, a set of Tinker Toys, I could, I could build a little model of this and, and show you guys what's, what's going on. You're sitting in a room with the highest power people in the business and you're proposing to go get a child's toy to help solve the problem. Dave Skillman uh, pulled me aside. He looked me straight in the face and he said, were you serious about that? I just kind of let myself out of the room and um, drove to the uh, nearby Toys R Us. People are asking me, can I help you? And I'm going, not easily, you know, this is not really the spacecraft aisle. And about an hour later, he came back and I sat down uh, at the table, he sat down next to me, and I put together a little working model of the, of the high cane antenna. And then right away, when I moved the, the two gimbals to the positions that they had been at when the torque occurred, uh, sure enough, this, this, uh, this little tinker toy model of a, of a counterweight was right in contact with this electrical extension cord. It was amazing how it actually allowed us to visualize what's going on out there in space. This area of high torque was really a relatively small piece of the total operational area of the high gain. As long as we stayed away from that obstruction, there was a whole you know, huge range of motion of the, of the antenna that would be able to operate. The, the model was able to convince the politicians and the managers that we did understand the problem. And then the technical guys had figured out what we needed to do to fix the problem. Nine o'clock that night, Sunday night, we. Uh, went into the control room and uh, the uh, folks in command uh, sent the commands up. And immediately we saw those torque levels go down when we turned it on and started to back, back it away. And we all breathed a big sigh of relief there saying, okay, we didn't break it. We think it's still operational. If we hadn't had use of the high, high gain, that would have been a, a big impact to Hubble. With the telescope now fully deployed, the Hubble operations team could finally catch their breath. And then, a couple months later, people discovered that devastating problem with Hubble's flawed primary mirror, a huge blow to the project. But incredibly, the Hubble team worked through it and found a solution to that problem and to many more obstacles over the next 25 years. So stay tuned for more Hubble Memorable Moments.